Major Shah, what's your perspective on the same? Uh, do you think it's merely procedural or of course the way it looks like pure vendetta, something which has anyway been a part of Pakistan, which is sort of a sham democracy? Uh, Minakshi, it is vendetta, there is no doubt about that, but it has been backed by procedures. So it is not just only procedures or only vendetta. If you want to catch someone, it's very easy to catch someone. If you want to overlook someone's folly, once again, it's very easy to overlook someone's folly. Here, Shabazz Sharif, when he came to power in his opening speech only, to when he addressed the nation, he said, Hum kisi se badla nahi lenge. Hum kanun ko apne tehet hi kaam kare denge. We will not take law in the hands. We will not interfere. We will not take revenge with anyone. We will take the law. We let the law take its own course. So here, yes, there is personal vendetta involved. No doubt about that. At the same time, it is not that he is not liable for an arrest for these uh, things that he's done. He is also liable for an arrest. Here, the the, the internet watchdogs they had barred the YouTube when he was his, his, his speech was streaming live. They had barred the television channel as well, but that was wrong. So Imran Khan himself has said that, you know, I will approach the court for this, but I don't know much how much the courts would listen to him or not and what would actually come out of it. And now his chief of staff, Mr. Gill, regarding that, he also spoke up uh, voraciously. But now let's see what exactly happens, uh, but actually because Imran Khan is likely to be arrested. That is for sure. And this was destined to happen. This was bound to happen. There was no other way out from it. Now, when he gives us a speech in the garrison capital in Rawalpindi, of course, I mean, people would be affected, but by threatening the police, by threatening a lady judge, by uh, threatening that, you know, if any action from any person, any leader from his party is taken, the consequences would not be good. That was his threat. So, yes, he is likely to be arrested. And let's see what happens after his arrest, Minakshi. Absolutely. Likely to be arrested sometime, uh, you know, something which we have rather seen in sham democracies like Pakistan. What do you think Major Shah Imran Khan's fate will be? Because we've known that uh, Pakistan, every time a ruling dispensation changes, they are not known to be very kind to their political rivals, especially the person they are succeeding. You are bang on there. You are absolutely right, Vinakshi. You know, they say history repeats itself. Now, if you go back in history, General Ayub Khan had got Zulfikar Ali Bhutto in power who rules the rules, who had become so powerful in Pakistan that people started referring to him as daddy. He was the daddy of the entire Pakistan, so to say. But then he was executed with a high court order legally through the military. The military only got him executed at, at the end of the day. In 1984, Shabazz, uh, Nawaz Sharif, Shabazz Sharif's elder brother, was the finance minister of the Punjab province of Pakistan. He was made the prime minister. He was got into power by General Ziaul Haq. That's a different thing that General Ziaul Haq died in a, in a air crash, the case of the exploding mangoes when he was going with the flying with the American delegation. But then General Ziaul Haq, it was the Pakistani military which got uh, Nawaz Sharif out of power as well. It, is, it has been a presence. Imran Khan, who had got, got him into power? Okay, Khalil, who had links with the Al-Qaeda. Apart from that, the Pakistani military. Imran Khan only gave General Bajwa an extension when he was to retire. Now, General Bajwa is due for retirement now, and General Fayyad Hamid and other generals are lying up to be the next chief. But let's see if he gets an extension or not. But now, Imran Khan's fate, very interesting question. Going by the presidents, what happened in the history of Pakistan, Imran Khan, many of their prime ministers, their premiers, they have left the country. They are termed as, uh, as, uh, as bhagodas, if, you, if I would say in Hindi. Hmm. General, uh, General Parvez Musharraf, yes. he's a bhagoda. Nawaz Sharif went to London for three week permission on his treatment. He didn't, he didn't return for the longest time. So yes, Imran Khan, it was estimated that either he should go abroad or doomsday waiting for him or he would be jailed. Or he, he could have been assassinated whereby he was in power as well. The Pakistani military is very much capable of doing that. In fact, you remember the time when the election was going on, Mirakshi, and everyone from Pakistan, from, from Imran Khan's party had lined up. But Imran Khan had not lined up. That time, I was on a one-on-one -on -one phone call with a, with, a, with a general, Indian Army general, of course, and he told me that, you know, I fear that Imran Khan could have been assassinated. I was like, oh, sir, oh, my God. So, we, it wasn't nice. It couldn't, we wouldn't have been surprised had that been the case as well. But, yes, no matter what, whether he stays in Pakistan, stays in jail, or he could have run away abroad, but he would have met his doomsday, and his okay. doomsday is only waiting for him, then, actually. 
Well, absolutely. And I, I think you've put it very succinctly. The future looks bleak for Imran Khan. What really happens next far as Mr. Khan is concerned and what is going to be the ramification far as we in India are concerned? We watch every movement in Pakistan very, very carefully and we'll continue doing so and disseminating not just the information but bringing a bigger perspective to our viewers. For the same, for now, uh, Major Shah, thank you for joining us uh, on the broadcast with your views on this big story.